<coughs> Excuse me. May I have your attention, please? Excuse me, please. Thank you. I am sorry to intrude upon this gathering. Allow me to introduce myself. I am Inspector Harold Smythe of Scotland Yard, and I'm here, regrettably, to investigate the death of Sir Roger Waters Down. No, there is no mistake. The body of Sir Roger was found by the assistant under gardener at approximately 5.10 p.m. earlier this evening, floating face down in the swimming pool. The report was received at Scotland Yard at 5.30, and I was sent out to investigate. The circumstances indicate that Sir Roger died by drowning. From an examination of his room and the premises, however, I have concluded that prior to drowning, Sir Roger was drugged. A half-empty bottle of sleeping pills was found next to his bed, along with a glass of water with sediment at the bottom. Oddly enough, there are lipstick marks on the glass, but it remains largely full. A chemical analysis of the pills, the water, and Sir Roger's blood is in process. Aside from these items, the circumstances of Sir Roger's death are unclear. I will summarize them for you. Number one. Sir Roger was wearing only slippers and dressing gown when he was found in the pool. Number two. Earlier in the day, workmen poured a fresh layer of concrete entirely surrounding the pool patio area. At the approximate time of death, the concrete was still wet and shows very clearly the marks of one set of footprints leading to the pool. The size of the footprints suggests that they were made by Sir Roger himself as they roughly conform to the shape of the slippers he was wearing. There are no other footprints or markings of any kind to be seen in the concrete. Number three. Access to the pool may be had from any room on first floor, south wall of the mansion, including the conservatory, the trophy room, the library, Sir Roger's office, or Ms. Ammonman's office. All of these doors are normally locked, and were locked when checked by me a few moments ago. The locks are of a type that require a key to lock or unlock the door. The second floor balconies on the south wall overlook the patio, and in the southwest corner directly overlook the pool. Due to the large stone buttresses that support the building, there is no access between the separate sections of the balconies. Doors from the rooms along the balcony have locks of the same type, requiring a key to lock or unlock them. They, too, are locked at the present. A police specialist has unlocked the door to Miss Sheet's room. Number four. Finally, a, a few minor points should be noted. A. On the balcony adjacent to Sir Roger's sitting room and to Ms. Ammonmon's bedroom, a scaffolding has been erected as part of restoration of the gargoyles at the top of the building. A 12-foot plank from this scaffolding has been removed and was found on the balcony lying at an angle to the building. B. Sir Roger's will file, normally located in his office desk, appears to be missing. C. A small round piece of blue-tinted glass was found on the balcony outside the deceased's bedroom. It appears to be part of a lens and has been sent to the lab for analysis. D. Inside Sir Roger's sitting room, an antique chest, which normally rests against the west wall, has been moved out of place. Along its arched upper surface, the chest bears newly made scratch marks. We have reason to believe that Sir Roger's death it was not an accident, though if a crime was committed here, it was masterfully done. We've ascertained that the entire household staff can provide each other with a satisfactory alibis for the whole afternoon and could therefore not have committed the crime. We will, of course, want to speak to each one of you in the morning to establish your possible motives and opportunities for murdering Sir Roger. You are instructed not to leave Waters Down Mansion until that time. If, in the meantime... You can resolve this matter amongst yourselves. It will, I'm sure, be to your benefit. For the duration of the evening, you may be assured that anything you say will certainly be used against somebody. Good evening.